If you thought the inline table valued UDF was cool, where do you see the multi statement table valued UDF? It is way cool. It begins with the same create function. We could put parameters here if we want to. In the returns clause, we have to completely define a table variable. So it defines the table variable with the at sign, data type table, and then here's the columns for the table along with their data types. And the reason why we have to define the table right here in the returns is because we're creating the table variable and the rest of the function will populate it any way we want to with any code we want to, which gives you the ability to do some really wild and crazy logic inside of what appears to be a data source. And you can do some very cool things with this. This is just a simple example where we're populating this price table with two insert statements. So the first one, and let's see, we're in the right database. So just highlight the select. The first one gives you the price for every product, along with the effective date. The second one does a group by code and averages together the price for that product across all dates. So both of those result sets are inserted using the insert select style insert into the price table variable that we created and defined up here in the returns. So create the function and then execute it. And you'll see, sure enough, there's all the individual price history data. And then the rows with the null for effective date, those are the rows from the second select being inserted into the price table variable that represent the average price across all dates for each product. So that's the, how the third type of UDF, the multi-statement table valued UDF, is created. This was just a simple multi-statement table valued function. Let me show you some cool things you can do with these functions.